So I've been using the Glidecam for the last 10 years plus. So I have a little bit of experience with it. So out of all that experience of filming with it almost every day, we made the next video that you're gonna be watching right now, answering a lot of the most common questions. Any questions we do not answer in this video, leave it down below in the comments. It will do a follow-up video to answer those. But this is a lot of real world application. Let's get started. Right here, I have a Canon 1DX Mark II. I'm going to do everything, because this video is in 1080p, I'm gonna do everything at 1080p, but I'm gonna do it at 60. And then on top of it, I have a Rode mic. For anything you see us doing, 95% of the time we always have a Rode mic on it. Every glide cam shot you see me do, I always have it on manual focus. To my knowledge, I've never ever filmed it with autofocus, um, just because I don't want to be surprised. If you're doing it in the Hollywood world, you're gonna have a setup like this, and this is what's called a wireless fall focus. You have a wireless transmitter right here, and this is transmitting the image to somebody else, and they actually have something where they're pulling focus for me. But when you're doing kind of a one-man show, which that's what we've been doing for the last seven years with our YouTube channel, as far as it, a lot of them haven't been big productions, this is the exact setup that we're using. We'll either have a Canon 5D Mark IV here, or Canon 1DX right here. And now the Glidecam itself, um, the Devon Graham Signature Series, it can handle two to 12 pounds of weight. We've been filming most of our stuff with the, uh, the RED, um, with the Canon 11 24 millimeter to be precise. People ask, like, how do you pull focus when you're filming with the glide cam? Well, we're not pulling focus. We set it to one set focal length, and then we go from there. So Zane is one of the members of Team Super Champ, and we're here in the office right now. So in this case, Zane is our fearless actor. I'll try and keep the same distance from Zane. So I'll have my glide cam right here. I'll go ahead and zoom in to 35. I have a 16 to 35 millimeter camera right here. And then I'm gonna pull focus. And then I'll go, ready, quiet, set, action. Now I'm just doing a traditional shot where the camera is directly right behind him. And I'm just following Zane as he's walking around. I have everything set to manual. Everything's set at 60 frames per second. But I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up so it's in real time. Zane's gonna stop and look around in awe. Camera's gonna wrap around. So I'm not pulling focus at all until I get in. Now you'll see Zane's out of focus. I'll go ahead and pull him in focus. Smile, Zane. He's so happy and precious. And he's out of focus again. So we usually cut out those sections as I'm going from here to here. That's the part you don't see that we're actually cutting out. This is a full frame camera, so it's gonna be a little bit wider than people that are shooting on, uh, on a crop sensor. But usually most cases, I'm not filming um, any glide cam shots on a lens tighter than a 35 millimeter. This is an over-exaggerated example as far as showing you that the tighter the lens or the bigger the focal length, the harder it is to have things in focus, but also have a shot that's smooth. Now this is all set up. Now this barrel, it helps get rid of lens flares and it, more than anything, it just makes it lens look more expensive. This is actually something people always ask as far as how many weights do you have on your glide cam. Depends on how heavy your glide cam is. With the 1DX, I'm putting four weights on both sides. I've been filming with the 5D Mark IV or III, or most DSLRs, I'm using three weights. If I'm using like a Canon Rebel camera, I'm using two weights most of the time. So I just hooked in the lens, the 800 millimeter lens. Now it's a quick release plate, so it's locked in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and balance it. And normally you're not gonna balance an 800 millimeter, so I'm not gonna get this perfect. And if you went on set and you tried to do this with a lot of professionals around you, you'd probably get a weird look. So I'm gonna go ahead, Zane, we're gonna do the exact same shot. This lens, you actually can't pull focus this close, so everything's already gonna be blurry, so it's already a bad idea. But for educational purposes, um, I have this as much of a focus as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and record. And action. Now, if you're looking directly at me, you'll see that that lens is actually really smooth. The lens is so tight that it's gonna look like garbage. Let's go ahead and give Zane a round of applause. Thanks Zane, you can go back to your room. The wider the, sh uh, the lens, the easier it is to actually have everything in focus, but also to track the shot and make it not look too wobbly. These are my three top favorite lenses when I'm filming with a glide cam in order. 11 to 24 millimeter f4 lens that's a more expensive lens then my second choice is the 24 to 105 lens which is right here and then my third choice and this is the lens i actually started with but it's a 16 to 35 millimeter and it's actually what we're shooting this video on that you guys are watching right now this lens right here it is the 24 to 105 canon f4 lens this is my go-to lens if i'm going to do anything where i'm going to be 
slightly telephoto and slightly tracking with the glide cam. So I'm gonna show you one more example. This is an actual example of something I would actually do and be okay with. Now let me just balance it really fast. So it's leaning forward. I'm gonna push it back a little bit. Wait for it. Okay, it's pretty good. And then you have this knob here. I lean to the left and it pushes the glide cam on the camera up on the top a little back. 24 to 105 lens right now. I have Zane in the shot. I'm gonna go ahead and pull focus. I'm doing everything manually. Okay, I'm just showing you right now, it is set to 24 millimeter, and that's what 135 looks. This is gonna be a lot harder to pull focus at 135, but I'll show you an example of how things change when you film on 135. Okay, ready Zane? And action. So this is how I would normally use a 24 to 105. I'm not gonna zoom in um, just because of the space of the room to 105. I'm gonna zoom in more to 70. Now I'm gonna walk around Zane and I'm trying to keep the same distance because if I move forward, it's gonna go out of focus. So stay right there, Zane. Now look around the office in awe. Now look back. Okay, go ahead and look at the window. And now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in at 24 so you can see the difference. Now go ahead and look back. This is what it looks like without a glide cam. Um, go ahead and stand right there, Zane. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same focal length again. It's gonna be 70. Okay, I'm gonna move. And I'm gonna move back, go ahead and look around. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom at 24. I'm gonna go ahead and walk or run. Same speed and look back. The last thing that I want to talk about, and I think for me, it's the most important thing. This is a mechanical device. It's not digital. There is a big human element to it, where it's also the operator, and I don't want to get rid of the operators that are doing brushless gimbals because I think they are super important. But what has changed recently is things have gone kind of from a more organic look to more of a digital look. And there's pros and cons to that, but one of the big cons to that is it loses the human element. Anything that is done mechanical, it's not always flawless. So for example, if I'm filming with a glide cam, occasionally there might be a little bump. Those little flaws are okay. A great example of that is the shining. You actually had a steady cam operator there. And in some of the shots, you can see where it's not completely perfect, where there might be a little bump on the steady cam. But you look at that compared to some of the other stuff that's being done where it's all motorized and all digital and they're entering things in the computer. And it's a computer movement compared to a human movement you can connect much better, in my opinion, when you see that human element. For me, the Glidecam is a tool that I've been using for the last 10 years um, that allows me that what I feel and what I think, I can get exactly what I want because of that, that element. There you have it. Thanks so much for watching. Any questions you have, leave it down below in the comment section and I'll have a bunch of links in the description of anything Glidecam that I think will be helpful for you guys. So make sure to check out that stuff as well. Thanks so much for watching, over and out.